Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. Today we are going to go over the upcoming balance adjustment for Epic 7. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, please see the video description below for a link to my Discord. So I'm on vacation this week, and I am recording this video on my laptop, so it may sound a little bit different than usual since I don't have my dedicated mic to record, but hopefully it'll be okay. So they released the balance adjustment preview for the upcoming patch, and quite a few heroes are getting buffed. We have ML Ken is getting buffed, Operator Sigrid for some reason, Holiday Yufin needs a buff, so that's exciting to see her on the list, Violet, which is really interesting, same thing with Elena, Sid and Helga are kind of whatever, uh, Mercenary Helga as well. Uh, for artifacts, we have Doctor's Bag and Shepherd of the Hollow getting buffed, so two artifacts that essentially have seen zero play in RTA, so that's exciting. Let's take a look at ML Ken first. I'm curious to see what they're going to change about him. So it looks like in his passive ability, he now gets a baseline increased effect resistance of 30%. So they're just giving him more stats there. And then when his S3 is available, he gets a CR boost by 25% every time he gets hit. So that's interesting. That's going to help push him up and, use, uh, and let him use his skill 3 more quickly since people typically build him with base speed and it usually would take quite a while before he could get his S3 off. On his S3, it looks like they're buffing it so that it has a slightly higher chance to uh, defense break the enemy team. And they're also giving his S3 the ability to always crit. So now his counterattacks will always crit, his S3 will always crit, his S1 looks like that's being unchanged, so uh, that will probably not crit if you're building him with no crit, obviously. So what do we think about this? Well, the problem with ML Ken prior to his being buffed is that it's almost impossible to build him with enough stats to be viable. You really need to build him with ER if you want to use him in RTA these days because if you don't do that he will just get debuffed you know with hit down, with stun, things like that and then he'll just sit there and be useless and because you typically build him with very low base speed so that you can build him with bulk and you know attack and crit damage he will sit debuffed forever you know so for the entire match since he can't cycle out of the buffs. So I think that these buffs are kind of a conservative way to make him more viable. Uh, this is not going to make him super broken, I don't believe. 30% ER is nice. You know, I think before you were able to get him comfortably to like 150 ER with very good gear. So this will allow you to get him to 180 ER with good gear. Or just keep him around 150 and then put those stats into other things like attack or, you know, crit damage or HP or defense. So that is a nice change. I've seen uh, some people complain about the fact that his skill two passive now pushes him up on the CR bar here because they think that, oh, he'll cycle out of his attack buff or his immunity buff or whatever. And I honestly don't think that that's a huge concern. If you're playing against a team uh, that's gonna cleave you, then he's either gonna get one shot right away and it's not gonna matter or He's going to you know, counter once or twice on the way up there and take out a few units because they're so squishy. If he counterattacks a cleave team once, he's just going to kill something, more than likely. And if you're trying to bring him into bruiser teams where he's not doing that, then I don't know. Um, I just don't really think that's his role right now. Additionally, I think you really do need to build him with ER, and uh, that should mitigate the fact that he's going to lose immunity. The point of building ML Kin with immunity right now is to prevent units who have uh, an ability to soul burn and ignore ER and disable him. So the main culprit there being Cerise. Uh, for her S2, she can soul burn, you know, ignore ER and stun a unit. So if you have immunity, she can't do that, right? Because she's typically the first unit to go and his immunity buff hasn't been removed yet. Uh, so that's really the main reason to use immunity. Beyond that, you really need ER to prevent yourself from getting debuffed. Uh, another thing is, you know, people say that he won't be able to have enough ER to avoid dedicated debuffers, which is true. He's never going to have that much. Even with godly gear, I don't think you can get him up to 250 or 300 ER. Perhaps if you use Strack Gauntlet, you can, but then you're getting rid of Sigurd Scythe and he doesn't have any sort of uh, ability to heal himself back up. And it's possible to just chip him down, uh, which is kind of dangerous for him. So I think you'll still probably need to use Sigurd on him. Um, overall, I think that this is a decent buff for him. It's not going to make him overpowered. He might see some more play now. We're going to have to see. Um, I would much prefer Smilegate doing buffs like this in the future since um, it's going to allow them to better tune characters rather than overbuffing a character 
and putting themselves in a situation where they don't want to nerf, you know, and give a selector ticket out. So I think this is a, a good step for ML Ken. Hopefully this makes him a little bit more viable. And if it's not enough, then maybe they can buff him a bit more in the future. Um, but I, I do like the fact that his S3 now uh, will always crit and he's going to get pushed up to do that, uh, which is really nice. If you build him, you know, with some attack stats, he can do quite a bit of damage on that S3, right? So pushing that up and getting that to happen uh, can be very valuable. Okay, next up is Operator Sigrid. For the life of me, I do not understand why they buffed this hero. She's already extremely prevalent in the upper RTA ladder. Uh, cleavers use her quite a bit. I've even drafted her occasionally to delete carrots, since, you know, carrots quite the menace and Operator Sigrid is a pretty good answer to her if you can trigger her shield before Operator Sigrid goes. Trigger carrot shield, I should say, and then Operator Sigrid just one-shots the carrot. So let's see what they're doing for her. On her... Uh, it looks like her skill 2 now deals damage proportional to the caster's speed, so she's just going to deal more damage on her S2. Uh, this is a fine change. I think she's, for the most part, one-shotting anything, uh, if she has attack buff especially, and I don't think that this is going to put her damage to the level of her not needing attack buff to one-shot things like FCC, so this is not a hugely significant change. It's obviously nice for Cleavers to do a little bit more damage, of course. And I don't think she really needed it. Um, this probably makes her a little bit more viable for people without perfect gear. So people in kind of like the lower champion, you know, area. Um, I think that it's hard to build Operator Sigrid if you're in that kind of bracket. Uh, you just don't have the gear to really optimize her at that stage. Um, the problem is that people who are in the upper levels of RTA right now uh, are just pretty oppressive in terms of how they have her built. Uh, they have the gear to really make her absurd. So let's take a look at her next skill, Obliterate. So this is her skill 3. And now, oh, if the target has a barrier, it ignores ER. And this also damage uh, is now proportional to the caster's speed. So her skill 3 is more or less unchanged other than the fact that now it does more damage and it ignores ER if the target has a barrier. Uh, this is a nice change for her. I think it's going to make her more viable as an opener. Right now you can kind of build Operator Sigrid in two ways. You can build her a little slower than your attack buffers, and then she comes out the gate with attack buff and skill two's a target, one-shotting it, and then goes into her skill three to deal a bunch of damage. And that's, I think, how most people have her built right now. Uh, another way to build her is to build her really fast, like 280 plus, and have her be your attack buff opener. And that can be really strong as well, but I think it's harder to use her that way. Uh, this will make her, I suppose, more relevant in this role since you're going to really reliably get that ER, uh, or ignore that ER, and therefore reliably get that, you know, strip and push back uh, into FCC teams. So a nice change for her, it does make her a little bit better and probably buffs up her role as that, you know, initiator opener. Uh, so I think that this actually may end up being the more significant change from an RP RTA perspective because one of the things that makes playing against cleavers very difficult is that you don't know exactly what they're going to do. There's a large number of ways to play aggressively in this game, and it's very difficult to play against them because if you're in the defensive role, you oftentimes need to make your draft in a way that it is kind of forecasting what your opponent is going to do, and so you're heading off their possibilities before they get there. Um, I'll give you an example. If you know that your opponent is a cleaver, and they take FCC first to deny that pick for you, there's a decent chance they're going to take Tea Time Tenebria because they've taken the FCC away and they don't have to worry about banning it to use their Tea Time. And a lot of people build their FCCs, you know, really aggressively if they're going to cleave. Uh, there are several people that do that on the high-end RTA ladder. So when you see those people take FCC, you know that a, that a Tea Time is coming and you can take an early speed contester to try and deny that Tea Time pick or to, or to handle it before it shows up. Um, and, you know, an example of that would be like a Falcon or Clary or, or something like that. Um, but if the opponent doesn't use tea time, you know, if that's not really what their cleave team is going to be built around, then this may be a dead pick for you. Um, so in the same vein of Operator Sigrid, when you see an Operator Sigrid picked, if you don't know if it is a speed contest one, you know, a fast one, or if it is a slow damage one that's going to go after their attack buffers, it's harder to respond. It's harder for you to predict exactly what the opponent is doing and to craft your draft accordingly. And whenever you have units built like that, or whenever you have units with that capability, it makes them harder to play against. So the fact that this is increasing Operator Sigrid's ability to uh, fill that initiator role, I think you're going to see more built like that, and then it's going to cause confusion on the ladder when you're drafting and 
be more difficult to respond to. So this is, I think, kind of a scary buff that may uh, be a little underappreciated at the moment. So super fantastic that Cleave is getting better. Here's Holiday Euphine. This one I'm really excited for because I really love Holiday Euphine's kit. She's a super fun hero to use, and its difficulties are in the meta right now. So hopefully they make her more relevant here. Her skill one is getting a slight increased chance to burn the target up to 15%. Nice, not super relevant though. Um, 75 is still pretty low, and when I was using her before on the Junkyard Dog build, it really felt like if you didn't get two burns, she just didn't do that much. Um, so I guess having a higher chance to burn is going to make this a little more consistent. Uh, this doesn't fix the problem though that it's just super hard to draft her right now because of her counters like ML Crow, etc. So hopefully there's something else that she gets here. Looks like her passive ability is getting a buff. They're just giving her baseline 20% evasion. And then when she's max health, she gets an additional 50, so she'll go up to 70% evasion. This is nice, but this doesn't really address her problem. Uh, you know, I think that her having baseline evasion is always a plus, but it's unreliable and it's not really going to fix the fundamental problem, which is that she always AoEs on her skill one, and it just doesn't do that much damage, especially if the enemy team is bringing in immunity and stuff like that. So, and there, there's a ton of immunity buffers, so it's just so easy to shut her down and counter her giving her a little bit of evasion and a little bit higher chance to burn is not really going to fix that. Uh, looking at her skill 3 here, they're changing her soul burn, it looks like, and that's pretty much it. They're changing it from increasing the buff duration to just decreasing the cooldown. So her soul burn is getting a significant buff. It's only 10 souls to burn this, and then it's going to decrease her skill cooldown. This is a significant buff for her. So if you do this, I don't remember how many turns her skill 3 is. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember. But if you're going to decrease it by two, she's going to be cycling this pretty quickly. Um, so I assume she's always going to have greater attack for the most part. So that's a nice change. That may make her more relevant as a bruiser. You know, if you can just cycle through and just always have greater attack up and, you know, put those greater attack burns out. Again, this doesn't address the problem of Emma Crow and other units like that that just completely counter her. So I personally don't think that this is going to make her usable. Unfortunate. I was kind of excited for this one, but yeah, this is not going to be enough. I'm kind of curious what they have to say here. So she'll have a stronger presence in battle, her soul burn has been improved, so she has constantly provides increased evasion, and yeah, better assist the team. So the other thing with Holiday Euphine is that you kind of used her skill 3 once to dispel Basar's ability, and then she was kind of a dead unit after that, so potentially having you know a more reliable skill 3 that comes up more often could be better. Uh, you, sometimes you were put in a position where you didn't want to use her ability, her skill 3, because the team had other debuffers and stuff like that and you had to hold for it, so maybe being able to soul burn this out the gate will allow you to more reliably use her to counter debuff teams. I think that would be the only real way to make her more viable. So maybe, maybe there's a potential that this is enough. I'll have to test it and see. Okay, here's Violet, uh, a hero that has seen virtually no play. So he's a single target, you know, green thief, and his problem before was that you had to really rush to get his skill 2 off so that he could have evasion. And looking at his kit now, they're changing quite a bit. His uh, graceful cut ability, so this is his skill 1, and when it's they're adding it so that when it's not the caster's turn, he gets 15% CR and gains double the amount of focus. So that's a very significant increase to his skill 1. Um, him stacking focus is important because it allows his skill 3 to do a ton of damage when that's max stacks. Duel, uh, accepted is his skill 2, so they're changing this. Uh, so let's see here, prepares for duel. So they're removing the evasion from his skill 2, and they are giving him a buff called Perception on it instead for 3 turns, and Perception just gives him stats, more crit chance and crit damage. And then it's also acquiring more souls, which is always nice. And then his skill 3, Butterfly Cut, they're putting the evasion on this when it's available. So it pierces the enemy with a sword, consumes all focus, so that's the same thing as before. When Butterfly Cut is available, he has his evasion. So now he has evasion at the start of the battle. And that's pretty significant because now you don't need to build him at like 240 speed or whatever. And that's how people were building him before, was like super fast so that he could get his skill too often, not just die. So now he has evasion from the start of the battle and doesn't, you know, just die. If you put him on ML Dreamblade or something like that, he'll have 55% evasion at the start of the battle just innately, which is 5% more than, I guess, 
well no, Remnant Violet would have 70% with his evasion buff. So still pretty unreliable, I think. I, I don't know. Maybe this is useful against a green team. Or sorry, against a blue team, because he's green. And he'll have the, you know, innate miss chance and stuff. So he could be a potential counter to various blue teams. Could be good for that. I wonder if he's gonna be pickable into like Cerise and Tea Time Tenebria type teams or something like that as a counter. What's interesting is once you use his skill three, which you're gonna probably want to use to one-shot something, his 35% evasion just goes away. Before you would skill two and have evasion for multiple turns. So this is a little different now, but he's a lot more consistent. So you can probably build him because he's getting a bunch of bonus stats from Perception now with significant, you know, bulk and damage and just assume that you're gonna, you know, dodge and whatever uh, and then just blow something up. Could be good against uh, a team with a lot of blue units. If he is RTA viable, I'm gonna say he's gonna be like a fifth pick um, against a team that has extended heavily into blue and does not have units like Spectre Tenebria, you know, stealth units that Violet can't get to. Uh, so, interesting, uh, but not overpowered. Here's Elena. So Elena was a hero that was sometimes used to counter cleave teams because you could put her on Tome. They would use their skill 3 to boost their C-Dom. Elena would trigger her skill 2 and push herself up. And if you build her fast enough, could potentially cut a C-Dom. And that was very difficult to do because people started building their C-Doms pretty quick. And C-Dom gets more uh, boost than Elena does. So I'll be interested to see if uh, they change anything with that. Let's see. So they're increasing her kind of damage mitigation against AoEs up to 20%. I think that's really valuable because before 15%, you know, I think things like Adam and Shield and whatnot would just kind of trumpet and it just seemed kind of pointless. So 20% is better. So that's a nice change. And now they're just giving her a built-in tome, basically a four-star artifact into her passive. That's a significant buff. So now you can put her on Tome and she'll get a 40% CR boost. And I think that's actually pretty significant. So now if you build her fast enough, I think you can reliably cut C Doms. And that's pretty huge. Um, so I think that Elena is going to see some play. That's actually really exciting. Um, you know, if you build her like 260 to 270 or something like that, and you go against a C Dom who is like 200 speed, well, I'm going to have to do the math, but I think you'll cut the C Dom. Uh, I need to remember exactly what percentage CDOM gets. You'll get a 40% CR boost. God, I want to say CDOM is a 50% boost. How much is it per... It might be a 40% boost as well. It might be like 10 per crit or something like that. I, I don't remember. Um, maybe it's 25 and maybe it's 5 per crit. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check. But having 40% CR boost I think means that if you build her fast enough you'll be able to reliably cut CDOMs. And that's pretty huge. Um, I think I might have done the math before with Flitica as well, back when Flitica C-Dom was a big thing. You know, because Flitica is going to boost the C-Dom as well, and that, that made it like almost impossible to cut her. But now people are mostly using just Cerise, right, for their CR boosters for C-Dom. So I think with Elena, uh, that could be a viable answer to Cleave. So I'm excited for that. That's a good change. All right, now we have some four-star Covenant buffs. Here's Sid, um, his... Relentless Strike ability, a critical hit will increase speed of the caster for two turns, and that goes away. Uh, when the caster is granted increased speed, uses Whirlwind instead of Relentless Strike. Whirlwind attacks the enemy repeatedly, decreases defense for one turn. Damage dealt increases proportional to the caster's speed. And when the resolve is being changed so that it has a 100% chance to grant a random buff for one turn. And these buffs include increased critical hit damage, effectiveness, evasion, and debuff immunity. And then he's just getting a little bit more effect chance. Interesting. So I think, I guess this probably fixes Dust Devil on him, but yeah, I don't know. Let's see here. Sid will now be more powerful when he lands a critical hit. I feel like they should give him like attack buff or something in these buffs. Because who cares if he gets like debuff immunity or something. I don't know, people don't really use Sid, so it's, you know... It's been so long since he's been relevant, it's kind of hard to know how this will affect things. I, I don't see this being super relevant. Maybe for some AI teams or something it could be good. Um, here's Helga. Uh, we just kind of want to skip down to Mercenary Helga because that's the significant unit here. Looks like they're increasing her ability to defense break by 10%. So that's always nice. 
and she gets more increased combat, or now she gets increased combat readiness uh, after using Cry of Victory um, by 50%. And then while using the attack chain, uh, if allies are Earth Elemental Heroes, increases the chance that the events break by 20%. So looks like they're kind of building Mercenary Helga to, you know, play well with Earth units. They've done this with some of the other, you know, like four star or specialty change, change type units. I think this is a nice change if you're using her in a dedicated like PvE team for something, which is probably what they intend. You know, she's just going to do her job better as, an, as a Deathbreaker. So it's a nice change for her and she'll probably be more PvE relevant. I can't say it's probably worth it to spend all those runes on just a dedicated PvE hero, but perhaps there's some content you know, where it makes it a lot easier to use her, you know, to accomplish. And that could be nice, you know, for like a Dagger Sakaar mission or something like that. Let's see, and then we're going to buff Doctor's Bag. So this was an artifact that was completely unusable before. Um, it would, you know, debuff and heal, I think, but it could only do it like once per battle. It just felt incredibly irrelevant. Uh, now it will dispel one debuff from all allies and recover 14% of each ally's mass health, max health after using a non-attack skill. So now it just does it on the first one, not a non-attack skill three times. Um, so probably you can more reliably activate it at the beginning of battle, and it can only be activated once every three turns. So I think it is actually usable now. So it's uh, going to be kind of like a burst heal and a dispel, and you can use it once every three turns. So could be uh, nice for certain team compositions where you're trying to set up um, a really impactful turn at the beginning of a battle. Um, I could see this being useful for certain Soul Weavers if you're going against very aggressive debuff oriented teams, since you're really gonna wanna get, you know, like a big burst heal, a big dispel right in the beginning, um, especially if maybe that Soul Weaver has a single, you know, debuff dispel, and now this increases it to two right in the beginning, um, in addition to a heal. So this could definitely be useful, I think. Hmm, this is interesting. I could see maybe, like, honestly, potentially Angelic Montmorency, maybe, if you're taking her against a debuff team, because part of what she struggles with, you know, she does really well in the long game, because she just sits there and kind of, like, slowly... Uh, removes debuffs at a very consistent rate, and typically debuffers can't keep up with her, right? Because she's just constantly dispelling stuff, but she doesn't do a ton of dispelling out of the gate, um, unless you can soul burn her skill 3. So this could potentially be useful to her. Um, it could allow you to either use your skill 3 on a unit right in the beginning and dispel a bunch of debuffs from that person and put immunity on them, in addition to clearing stuff from the rest of your team and healing them. Um, so I could see her potentially using it and becoming more relevant against kind of like debuff cleavy type things. So I think Doctor's Bag is actually usable now. So that's kind of exciting. Here's Shepherd of the Hollow. Let's see, this before increased evasion by 20%, and damage dealt increased by 20% of the caster's health is below 25%. So this is kind of a meme artifact before. Let's see what they did with it. Um, so increases evasion by 20%, that looks the same. Uh, damage dealt increases by 12% when they attack uh, when attacking, and his health decreases. Damage increases up to a maximum of 24. Okay, so they just kind of increase the damage on it a bit, and now you get some damage increase, you know, before you lose health. I think this artifact is still pretty irrelevant. There's just better options. Um, Moonlight Dreamblade is still just better because you can get attack buff, and that just does, you know, is going to do way more, right? Um, it also doesn't have this weird condition where you have to have like lost health to you know get the increased damage. Um, I think this could maybe be a meme artifact on Kron, but you probably want to put him on something else anyways, uh, like Dust Devil or a Knife or something like that. So yeah, not super relevant. I think that is it. Um, I'll be excited to see if ML Ken becomes a thing. Hopefully he does. Um, I think the thing I'm most excited for is Elena. Uh, since she could be, you know, a potential counterpick to Cleave. Um, and then I'm going to keep my eye on Holiday Euphine. She could potentially be a relevant bruiser against certain teams now. Um, scared of Operator Cigarette. I predict we're going to see more Operator Cigarettes built as openers. So we'll see if that happens. Let me know if you uh, think you've thought of anything that I didn't see with these changes. Uh, otherwise, that'll be it for now. Later.